What's up gamers, it's time for the Sandbox News. This week, we have a new add-on manager for managing your add-ons, a new system for speech recognition, new controller support, including glyph icons and button origins, tons of updates to Unicycle Frenzy, including two official maps, one community map, sprays, and more customization options. We also have a new tile set and example particle systems. Let's start with speech recognition. There's a new, very basic speech recognition API. You can use this to get text from what the player is saying. This opens up a ton of possibilities for games similar to Phasmophobia or anything that uses speech recognition. Another example of this being useful is creating an NPC that you can go up to and you can tell to do commands such as collect wood. I've been thinking about making a VR fast food game mode where you have to make food and you have to take customers orders. And every time a new customer would walk up, you would have to use speech recognition and ask them, may I take your order? There is a new and improved controller support system. You can see now I'm playing this video game using a controller. I'm not very talented with the controller as you might be able to tell, but I'm sure if you had experience, you would be able to use this. Controller support just works natively with most game modes. There's nothing special about it. However, if the game mode wanted to, it could support advanced features like analog buttons. I'm here in Conquest and we can see the new glyph icons. On the right corner of the screen, you can see it shows the controls and a little icon telling you which button is which. And a really cool thing about these glyphs is they update automatically once you start to use a controller. So you can see it shows me the buttons on the controller. This is very exciting. Here we can see all the glyphs for the different controller types. There's, I think this is the Xbox controller, the keyboard, and the PlayStation controller. You can tint these whatever color you want. As you saw in Conquest, they were tinted. And in the future, there will likely be more styles for these. This is a very early work in progress and definitely subject to change. In addition to glyph icons, we also have the ability to get a button origin. I believe this is the word of what button a specific keybind has. So for example, if I was to get the origin of the jump key, it would tell me space or X if I was using a PlayStation controller. That would be an alternative to the glyph icons here. We have a new reworked add-on manager. Currently, this is for games and maps. There are no Gary's Mod style add-ons yet. There's our plan for the future though. Here I'm in the developer mode and I'm in the add-on manager tab. I actually had to add this in manually because it's not in by default yet. You go to view, add-on manager. This was just implemented, so it's brand new and definitely early work in progress. Here we can see a list of all the add-ons that I have right now. I can right-click it to enable or disable it, and I can open the folder and remove add-ons. If I want to add an add-on, I can click add from disk, and I can navigate to my add-ons folder and find the specific add-on that I want. For this, I'm going to add my back rooms game mode. I'll find the folder and then I'll double click on the add-on to add it. This is a new system, so all of the old add-ons have to be updated to use this. I can right click and upgrade it. And now I have my add-on here. I can click it to edit it. I can change the add-on identification. This is the name of the folder. I can change the organization. The title is Back Rooms. This is the human readable title. For example, Sandbox or Counter-Strike. And this is the add-on type. You probably don't want to change this. Here you can save the section for assets. For now, you'll probably want to leave these blank. And there's a section for code. Obviously, if you have a map, you would untick code. And you can see the file path for the code. By default, everything is saved in the code folder. And you can change your root namespace. You don't technically need a namespace. However, I do have a namespace. I'm using the namespace procgen in here. So I'll copy this and I'll put that in as my root namespace. I've saved the changes. And now if I go to my local games tab, I can see the back rooms is added in here. Keep in mind this add-on system is brand new. It was just added today and it's very early work in progress. I'm sure we'll see a lot of changes and it might end up looking totally different in the future. We'll see. We'll also see about Unicycle Frenzy. This has gotten a ton of updates, including more customization options. Here you can see an update. Very interesting. Um, I think I have to restart to fix that. Okay, so don't move the camera in here, it's buggy. So you can see there is an environment in the preview here and it shows you the trail. Oh, this is the frame. 
They've added new frames for the unicycle. So I'm gonna look through them all. There's the different frame, blue, green, orange, pink, purple, red, teal, yellow, black, and white. Wow, there's different colored wheels too. That's so interesting, wow. And nope, one seat still, one pedal. And we can see the preview for all the different trails. It looks like there's no collision. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. It looks like there's no collisions in the preview. But if I move around, the trash props actually do collide with the environment. There's also new sprays. So if I press F, I can spray down some graffiti on the wall. There's currently a Face Punch logo and a logo for the game mode. This is very interesting, very cool. I wonder if they stay forever. Can I just spam these? I think some cool spray ideas would be arrows pointing in different directions, maybe saying go here, and maybe a stop sign. We can see here though, the sprays have faded away. This map is called Splinter. It's set in a log foresting area with trains and trees and lumber. This is very interesting. We have another new unicycle map. This one is called Beach. As you might imagine, it's set on a beach and it has a lot of shipping containers randomly placed everywhere with some big rocks. Wow. The third unicycle frenzy map is a community made map. This is made by Sandy. It's called Fort. As you might imagine, it's set inside a big fort. You have to ride your unicycle through these broken staircases and over the damaged bridge. This is so dangerous. Imagine if you fell off, you would get eaten by at least 12 sharks, one for each of your fingers. That's so dangerous, just imagine. We have a new pipe tile set. This is for pipes, as you might imagine. You can use this to quickly create very interesting pipes. It comes in different sizes. Additionally, you can change the color of the individual pipes. This will make placing pipes a lot easier. We also have new example particle effect. Here we can see a collision particle example. The little gizmo models are colliding with the floor here. There's a constraint distant example. Apteroid showed example. It's very interesting. This is a follow control point example. Here is a grid example. This is an example flame. This is moving between two points example. Here this is an on kill example. This is a pull towards example. This one's really cool. You can see the particles expanding and then getting pulled back. This is a screen space example. It looks like it includes an approximate guide for VR and a lot of measurements. This would actually be really useful. This is a snapshot example. I believe you can use this to write text maybe? I'm not entirely sure how snapshots work. These are all very useful. I'm very much chuffed to bits by these. There's no more sandbox news. That's it. Like, comment, and subscribe.